And we're back with Heidi Hollis talking about the shadow people and the hat man. And if you were to be uh, subjected to one, which would you prefer to visit you, Heidi? <laughs> I would say zero, but, uh, uh, you know, shadow people are, are more passive. But uh, if being choked and pinned down to your bed is passive, I guess that's better than being absolutely violated in every manner that hat man does. But, you know, one thing that uh, I'd like to put out there to people too when you suddenly start seeing something like shadow beings and i mean like it it looks like there's suddenly a bat in your house but you're seeing just a streak or if you're seeing uh, something that looks too dark in a corner and you just feel a a presence beware because that that is absolutely uh, their signature and and also if they start out of nowhere be aware of uh, personality changes on somebody. Are you starting to argue a lot? Or if somebody gets sick suddenly or accidents start occurring, That these things aren't just attracted to those things. They cause them, too. So I tell people, know how to bless your home. And, and I have it free. Uh, if people reach out to my website, HeidiHollis.com, I'll email it to them. I have it in my Shadow People and Hat Man Experiencer group on Facebook. I mean, I, I, it's like people say you're giving this to, the, to us free. It's like I don't know the, the price of a soul. I mean, yeah, I know this can help keep them away so you can sleep at night, build up your strength, and, and protect yourself. But when it gets to a level of possession, that's a whole other ball game. I don't know how to do exorcism, but I know how to help people keep the peace in their life. Do they also come in your dreams? Yeah, you know, that's a a, a that could be a first step or it could be a last step for them to come into people's dreams. Uh, people can suddenly start having nightmares and they open their eyes and it's in the room. Yeah. Um, other, t- other times they've blessed their home and got rid of them and they start having nightmares or in between too. Um, and why they do that. It's like a, a way to study you to see what your weaknesses are, uh, how to infiltrate, uh, what button to push, how, emotional you'll get if they show you an image of your, your child being harmed or something, uh, things like that. And after blessing your home, that's like their last swings, I guess you could say, to try to uh, make a dent, like to put you into fear that, oh, well, you didn't get rid of us. It's like, no, you're in the dreams only. I mean, they're trying to weaken you and make you question what you did to protect yourself. So I tell people, you know, don't worry, you know, they'll get, they'll, they don't necessarily grow tired, but it'll fade, you know. Um, but they're always looking for an opportunity in. And if you start getting other issues in your home, again, it could be somebody dragged it in. Some You've got a, a used object from a Goodwill will or something like that. And, uh, you know, just bless your home again. You know, just be vigilant. And uh, I keep my blessing with me because what I use to bless my home and space is my cross necklace. And... I keep it with me so when I go to work or when I go on trips, I'm not worried to that extent because it's happened where I practice as a therapist or or whatever. uh, These things have shown up. So uh, gone after coworkers, gone after friends, uh, family, anything to try to isolate me, uh, oppress me, depress me, and then possess me, you know, but it hasn't gotten to that level, thank God. Heidi, are they soul catchers? Is that what they want? Is that their goal? Ultimately, when it comes to uh, the hat man, we think of the devil. What is he trying to get? He's trying to definitely gather the souls and to trap them, to keep them. For, uh, for all damnation, them. yeah. It, honestly, and it sounds so cliche, it sounds so silly, this rumor of a, of a hell existing. And... After all that we know, and yeah, I, I, I've I, heard, I've seen, I've, I've had really strange uh, experiences, and, and there's people that have had near-death experiences in the millions that have seen this darker place. And why do we keep that? Why, why is that rumor still going on? I mean, there is something to it. We know that darkness can influence. We know evil can possess and take over. I mean... Horror movies are a top sell, you know, so we know there's evil. And uh, rest assured, they're interested in us for some reason. But I just hope people realize we're, we're very powerful. Or they would have 
taken over a long time ago, but they haven't. They haven't. And they have to work on us and chip at us and wait till we're asleep and, oh, we got you now. We're going to give you a bad nightmare. You know, they have to do so much to break us down because there's something truly special about us. I mean, that's biblical, too, right? That angels got angry, that God favored us or something. You know, it's like there's something to us and, and have no doubts that our creator would protect what he created. These darker, jealous, envious things, they've got to work so hard. And, and all we have to do is call on God. And I hope people really take to understanding the, the power in that, because I've, I've literally been face to face with something and I'm like, oh, Jesus, help me, you know, boom. And, and it's, it's gone I, or I'm pulled out of the situation. And, you know, I, I've, uh, I've had situations that uh, have been scientifically proved, medically proved, absolutely being healed, cured, you know, and uh, that's something that I'm working on in, in my new book and describing in more detail about these things that have happened. It's like, if it isn't God, who who did this? This is not a coincidence, you know, and uh, I, I just hope people put more interest in the positive. They're so enamored with evil and who you know you know hat man's got my you know owes me or whatever it's these silly memes on it and uh people have died now children have died for these odd challenges they put on social media for hat man and and they reference me and my work like because i named it i put the whole phenomenon out there shadow people and hat man and and, and it's like painting all of the work to say Go to God. There's a, there's a devil walking around. You know, this is a modern day version of what people understand to be the devil, and they're making jokes of it. And I mean that that's a saying, isn't it, George? That uh, the greatest trick that that uh, the the devil ever did was to convince people he's not real. That's it's right. Like, and it's working. Great it's line by Al Pacino. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, let's go to the phones. John in Wisconsin to get us started. Go ahead, John. Hello, George. Hello, Heidi. Hi, John. I have a hi. I have a brief comment and a question for Heidi, please. I've always considered mm -hmm. myself a common sense guy, and there's way too many people that have similar stories of Hat Man and Shadow People for it to be made up folklore. Also, with the exception of shows like Coast to Coast AM and Beyond Belief, there's not much resources for the average person to learn more about it. And I guess my question to Heidi would be. If we did talk more about this openly, I believe there'd be a lot more support and less anxiety. And Heidi, do you think the government, religious leaders, business leaders, people that make decisions suppress all this information from us because they are not comfortable talking about it or they themselves fear the reality of this? And, and again, it's, it's ironic, Heidi, because when you talk things through and work things through, irrespective of the subject, it brings healing and peace because you can talk openly about it. And Heidi, I want to thank you for two quick things, and I'll let you go. I want to thank you for everything you shared, and I want to equally thank you for mentioning God and faith and your cross because that's how we rebuke the devil and get him out of our home, out of our rooms, out of our workplace. Thank you for sharing that, Heidi. And, George, thank you for taking wow. my call. Sure thing. Wow, well, thank you, John. That's beautiful. My home state, and I'm sitting in Wisconsin right now, right where I discovered Shadow People and Hat Man, believe it or not. Um, a lot of people don't realize that it's like, yeah, but, um, wow, I, I got goosebumps, John. Thank, thanks for uh, the kind words and, and support. Very nice. <sighs> you know, the government is very much uh, aware uh, of this. Uh, and so are the, the religious institutions. How do I know? Because they've contacted me. Um, I, I've heard more conversation in regards to, uh, these topics and, uh, I forget the guy that was talking about it that's uh, situated in the government, called them tricksters. It's like, really? Yeah, you know it. <laughs> I know where you're going with this. They are very much aware, and you're right. It, we should have more open conversation about this. Uh, the podcast that I've, I've done for Coast to Coast uh, uh, AM is called Dark Becomes Light, where I'm taking people's uh, stories and talking about this, and you can find it on Coast to Coast here. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been talking about it, <laughs> for ever for as long as George has been doing coast to coast practically, so it's uh, 
you know, trying to put it out there, trying to put the right word out there. And uh, instead of people grabbing, trying to make a dollar off from uh, people's souls, <laughs> the, the, this, this conflict. And I'm like, do you, do you not understand what you're, you're toying with here? I mean, and, and as they do, I've had um, somebody I worked with to try to put the story into film. Do you know that everybody on set got attacked? Everybody. Really? And, and, and yes, in front of and behind to the point that we dropped it all. I mean, we dropped it. People got sick. They got cancers. Uh, things were, were breaking. Uh, the, the actress got uh, this thing came out of the wall and grabbed her. I mean, horrible. It's horrible stuff. So it, it's, people think this is something to just uh, take lightly. It is not. It is not. And uh, it, it breaks my heart because it, it, it's not something to sit there and hope that, uh, you know, gosh, I could really do something with this and create a, a, a name for myself. It's like I, I reluctantly took a step forward, but it's also something I remembered agreeing to do in this lifetime. And, um, you know, as much as my dad encouraged me to use a pen name, <laughs> cause he, and I told him, Dad, you didn't have any sons, and Heidi Hollis sounds really good. So I'm going to abuse that last name to its fullest and use myself as an example, you know, have at it. I, I'm being as honest and open as I can. And, you know, and then then on top of it all, to, to be having to come forward after talking about the, the whole alien uh, conversation and say, well, now I saw Jesus. Well, I, I have to be honest, George. I have to be honest. I'm like, I can't, I can't just sit there and, and pretend I don't have the things that have have that have happened my way and soon i hope to uh, come back to uh, to chat a bit more about what i've discovered in all of this because it's gotten gotten to be really complicated but interesting and i i think it'll help a lot of people move past like is this real or not um because man it, god has a lot of uh a lot of miracles to share yet <laughs> So I'm excited about it. Next up, west of the Rockies, Scott's with us in Costa Mesa, California. Welcome. Hi, Scotty. Go ahead. Hi, Heidi. Hi, George. You know, I've got a story and then also just sort of some comments about sort of uh, the movie Ghost, when the bad people get taken to wherever they were going by the shadow right. people. Yeah, and they turn into mm -hmm. those globby things. Just like them, right. Yeah. That's very strange. But uh, the story that I have was back in August of 1992, and I was traveling with a performance group, and we were staying in host families. And um, so I was with a host family with a roommate. And late at night, I heard my roommate getting up out of his bed, and I looked up and saw him there. You know, I thought maybe going to the bathroom or whatever. So I put my head back down on the, the pillow, and I immediately heard snoring. So I looked back up, and he was in his bed sound asleep. Well, I looked to where I just saw him, and it was a shadow person or a shadow being, Ooh. and it yeah. backed up into the shadow of the drapes and was gone. And yeah. didn't, tr didn't try to attack you? Nothing like that. Well, I that's the thing. You know, I felt no threat. That was a very strange, mm -hmm. but I just put my head back on the pillow and fell asleep. But I, I, I'm not sure I could have gone back to bed. Well, well that, that's just the thing that there was no, there was no angst in my brain. I thought it very strange, but I did talk to my roommate the next morning, and he did not want to hear anything of it because he has had the experiences in other host families um, previous, and so I don't know his religious background or whatnot, you know, what his moral compass was or whatnot. Um, but I never felt, and I don't think that the shadow person was looming over me. It was more of him, my roommate. And so it was, I just thought it was very strange. And I do know mm -hmm. that um, my friends that I have, you know, everybody has a multitude of friends. My friends that are very high anxiety they can't handle those kind of stories. <laughs> no. My friends no. that are very open-minded, I can discuss anything with them. And I do think mm -hmm. that it's all all in who you can talk to. And that's why I appreciate, you know, Coast to Coast is because 
weird things do happen to, well, I'm going to call myself a normal person, <laughs> but weird things do happen to people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's it. we got to get get it into a, a normal uh, level. I, I know how to clear a room when I want to. I know how to freak people, people out, but I want... I want to talk about this on the level. I want to try to keep it friendly. So people might say, oh, she giggled too much or she sounds too friendly about this. And it's like I'm being who I am about any other topic I I discuss because I want to have people ask questions and feel comfortable versus having them clear the room. So um, I think it's it's healthy. And, uh, you know, what you're talking about this doppelganger of your 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 friend um walking around i had it happen as well and and it seems that uh it, these things can shape shift to make themselves appear as so do aliens by the way uh to appear as something else or someone else and it's it it pulls your attention away it, it puts your guard down even you know it's like oh it's just them and then it's like hold on you know it's like why is it stealing their essence and their shape it's not to be good not positive doesn't make you feel good inside, you know. I, and, you know, I, I get it uh, not feeling fear uh, because it's something familiar. So it does let your guard down. So, um, you know, what what is the purpose of this? I think there's a whole lot of uh, things that we could throw in there as to why that is. So, um, yeah, but I appreciate you sharing the story. It's interesting. Let's get a quick call out of John Truck Driving in Ohio. Mm-hmm. John, go ahead. Hi, Heidi. Hi, George. I, uh, man, Heidi, I always look forward to for you being on here and also on the website. Um, I've had a few things as a child with Catman. He's never really, I mean, he appears, but he doesn't do anything. And I had a dream years later. I was going through some problems, you know, stress, like you say. And I think that's when they try to get to you, the weakness. And I, I had a dream where I was in a cornfield and I was walking by, and he was on, he was a scarecrow, but he came off of the scarecrow, and he became the mm-hmm. sanity, and he started chasing me, and then another being that was light got between me and him, and he stood and stared, looked him over, and was gone. Beautiful. And I never had that dream again. Now, I just want to, real quick, I had a friend, we were watching Babylon 5, and you, and I never watched that show that much, but they had a thing about these shadow beings. These episodes, and my friend says, "You know, I never told anyone this, but this—I believe this is real." He was driving one night, and he saw a young lady on the side of the road walking, and he stopped, and he said, "What happened?" And she said, "She ran out of gas." He went, said, "Come on, I've got a phone. Sit in here, and we'll get someone to come help you out." He had a rosary with a cross on his um, he's Catholic, on his rearview mirror, and she stepped in, and it stopped. And she looked at him, and she looked at the rosary, and he said, you could just, her eyes turned totally brown or dark. And she just turned totally dark like a shadow and just drifted away. Jeez, that's a great story, too. We'll get more of your reaction, Heidi, when we come back on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Norrie with Heidi Hollis, and Heidi's websites are all linked up at coasttocoastam.com, along with her Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. You're all over the place, Heidi. Yeah, I'm doing my best to try to put the word out there and try to get people to wake up to know that they have a soul. And, uh, you know, with that last caller and talking about how God intervenes, I mean, there's evidence like that all over. Uh, the sightings of Jesus are going up all over the place as well. This, uh, I've, I've had a friend that looked on the Arabic language uh sites and and conversations and people are seeing him and they're converting it's like something's happening something's changing and trust that uh you know god's not going to leave us hanging when we're met with some of these dark entities what were those ghouls in the movie ghosts with the late patrick swayze (laughs) that would take the bodies and pull them down into the gutter right they look so similar to uh what people report like the head and shoulder looking shadow being and you got to remember, these Hollywood guys are humans, too. They might have experienced it themselves. I mean, the Hat Man phenomenon as, as well. Uh, I've heard that, like, Freddy Krueger was based on the Hat Man phenomena. I mean, but it, it didn't have a name back then, you know. So it's, uh, you know, people are experiencing these things. It's it's a true 
phenomena, and uh, we're, we're communicating in all different ways about it. Back to the calls east of the Rockies, Joseph in Long Island, New York. Hey, Joe, go ahead. Hey, George. You know, I heard a song on the radio, Galileo by Indigo Girls from the 90s. So I was thinking of you when I heard that yeah, song. The old classics. Yeah, <laughs> yes. So, Heidi, I have two longer questions. Not too long, but uh, mm-hmm. first, uh, you were talking about uh, weaknesses and uh, how they could be exploited by the hat man. And I was thinking, first of all, these two slippery slopes. One would be uh, uh, the idea of people, uh, the rules, make up rules, but sometimes they're pretty absurd, all right? They'll say, okay, I'm tr- if I drink three beers, I'm not drinking. If I steal only 5000 in an office situation where you can get away with it, I'm not stealing. It's got to be over 25000 So they make up rules like that, or they do set a boundary, but the boundary may not work. Okay, uh, I, you know, I'm worried that horror movies will trigger something, so I'll only watch two a month and they won't be that bad. But what what if those two horror movies do trigger something? So that's my first question. My second question is about dreams. You were saying that there's some volition or voluntary behavior if you're dreaming where you could almost make a deal with the devil in the dream, which I found interesting. But I also want to ask you about the appearance of strangers in a dream. And it may, that stranger, even if he or she talks to you, may not have much to do with you or may indeed have something to do with you, just like in real life. Someone could ask you for directions and maybe they think you're friendly or someone could approach, say, somebody and say, oh, uh, you know, you look like you'd be a good actor or a model or, you know, whatever, and it's more personalized. So how do you distinguish in a dream what the stranger means? Yeah, you know, Really good questions, and uh, gosh, I, I hope I can, can answer them uh, sufficiently for you. When it comes to um, some of these things that you, you see in, in the movies and, and whatnot, and they start, like, conjuring something, speaking a language I don't know, uh, it, it, can it influence the room that I'm in? I don't know, so I mute it. <laughs> I absolutely mute it. I don't know what they're saying. I don't, I don't know the reasoning behind some of the words or the intention, so I mute it. So it's like... Can it do something? Potentially. I'm not I'm not sure. But uh, when it comes to these things appearing in your dreams um, and, like, how do we know what's going on? And it's like we have this, this gut instinct that tells us that, gosh, it, it kind of looks like my friend at the door, but uh, something doesn't feel right, but you open it anyway. You go against your better intuition. And, and those are the scenarios that, that they're symbolic. You open up a door. It doesn't seem real. Uh, It doesn't seem like that would be the truth of it. But more recently, I was talking to a deacon, and I said, yeah, these things are tricking people. I was like, no, they're not tricking people. The people were not close enough to God so that they were open, uh, uh, you know, to these things. I'm like, I don't know, because there's a lot of deception out there uh, with these things. They can can absolutely uh, make themselves appear appear as something and and one thing the more positive beings told me it's like you, you got to be able to close your eyes and feel what's in front of you and not just going with what you're seeing because these things can shape shift they can impress upon you different things um so it's it's not easy um but i'm hoping that we'll we'll get uh we'll get more used to discerning these things his other question was horror movies do they trigger anything yeah, so it, that's uh, I, I think it can, and, and like I was saying, it's like can it can it trigger something? It's like mute it, <laughs> you know. Uh, some people uh, will see something on Hatman, like oh, I can't stand it because I'm afraid it's going to happen to me. I think sometimes people could fixate and definitely cause themselves some trouble. But I watch horror movies to know what's out there and what people might be dealing with and what they're dreaming up uh, in Hollywood. But uh, but yeah, I'm always like if if you feel that it it, it can, it it really can. Um, there's things that's told us, you know, that uh, we all think about something and make it happen. Uh, so I, I think anything's possible, but I, I think we should also have stronger faith to know that uh, we can limit that uh, influence. Let's go to Art, first-time caller in Baltimore, Maryland. Welcome to the show. Well, Hi, Art. 
Hey. Hi, Heidi. <laughs> hey there. Nice to meet you. Well, nice to talk to you. Um, I've had some experiences lately look, with the sh- some shadows out of the corner of my eye. I saw some, like, somebody in the kitchen, and I was it wasn't me. I was in the hallway. But we've had um, three people die in this house that I'm in. I'm in my friend's house, and I'm actually sleeping in the bed his mother died in. Wow. But they were relatively religious, but it still seems like there's a lot of hate coming towards me. I'm meeting a lot of bad people. No, that's terrible. Uh, and I, you think, know, when I comes... think the devil will get you when you're down. Well, that is true. Oh, yeah. That is true. But if you, you deal with a lot of negativity, Heidi, from other people, mm-hmm. is it going to rub off on you? It, you know, being around that brings anybody down. So, I, And I think it will attract negative things to, to want to take advantage for certain. And initially seeing these things in the corner of your your vision it, it's it's a predator how can i say it's like it's something that uh we all have we have we're more sensitive to light and dark in our periphery vision just in case a predator was coming you know so we see these shadow beings more easily from our periphery so uh it's and when they you're able to see them more straight on that's when they're mean business so um yeah so i it definitely uh it could be a warning that they're around Let's go to Brian in the state of Washington. Welcome to the show. Hi, Brian. Go ahead. Oh, thanks, George. Sure thing. Heidi, what a blessing. Heidi, I could say <laughs> just listening to the radio station, how I pick you guys up in Washington State here, your voice is resonating really, really good. And, yeah, I'm so glad. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's just like crystal clear. So my question was, is what do you think, because I've had my experience, but I I just want to hear your uh, opinion on it, of the men in black. Because I had one experience, but we don't have enough time to talk about it to where I believe that these guys are real. But I just wanted to hear your aspect on them. I'll tell you what the beings, uh, alien beings told myself and my college roommate, that um, that's a form that shadow uh, influence it takes. Uh, when they want to be very physical, uh, they influence these um, beings that that look like that. Um, but of course, there's the the human versions of them too. But there's there's a force of them that are apparently not uh, human at all, and they are under the influence of these shadows uh, from this universal uh, issue that's going on. Uh, that's what they told me. Um, but yeah, definitely not not a positive thing. Um, so they're not on our side. Whose side are they on, Heidi? <laughs> well, the shadow beings. Uh, that's what the, the, the more positive alien beings told myself in college roommate that they were uh, definitely under the influence of, that they were possessing this form, men in black form, uh, when they wanted to be physical, absolutely physical. Let's go to Anaday in Yonkers, New York. Anaday, hello there. Oh, thank you so much, George, for taking my call. Heidi, it's a great honor to speak with you. You're a very deep, gifted person. I I went to your side while I was waiting. I happen to be sighted on both sides of the family. My mother was Thuringian, which is southeastern German, and my father was Scots-Irish, and they both had the sight on each side of the family. If you take a mother and a father, the child is even stronger. So, that being qualified, Heidi, there are two (laughs) shadow beings in my house, and they're not entities like a human. They were not discarnates, meaning a soul that has progressed, but they've Mm -hmm. always been in nature, and they're about seven feet tall and anamorphic, meaning there's no mass. And then sometimes they merge, but they're not malignant. And they go into a 1700s antique mirror, which is like an interdimensional vortex. I'm sure you've had Mm -hmm. experience with that. Yeah. (laughs) But also, Heidi, there's a 10-year-old girl from the Victorian era, and she sometimes appears, and when I see a ghost, they look like a real person. They, it's not like Hollywood where you can see through them. Right. They look like they are a three-dimensional person. But the weird thing is, 
is that the house that I live in is from 1928. It's a colonial knockoff. But she looks as though she came from the Victorian era, which is much earlier. So I'm like wondering, my entire neighborhood, when the colonists came, was an Indian neighborhood. They were called the Agiwung, and they were an offshoot of the Iroquois. And there's a ley line. And lately, more spirits have been coming to me, and they don't know that they have progressed. They're just like here on Earth. They haven't transited. They're here, and they come to me, and they're like, that's the guy. And I'm like, what can I do to, like, stop them coming through? Because this is wow. like, you know, it doesn't, bo- it doesn't bother me mm-hmm. because I'm a tarot reader, and, and I do readings for people, and people are like, oh, my God, Anna, yeah. you're great. But is there <laughs> something that I can do to, like, stop the... Influx of them. It, yeah, you know, I, exactly. That's. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I used to be absolutely slammed with things like that. And when I saw a headless woman, I was done. And I marched around where I lived and said, look, I, I am done. I don't care why you die. I don't care why you're here. I am off limits. Tell your friends. Tell your family. And it really slowed it down. I mean, like 80% of it. And it still is a lot better. And I don't consider myself to be psychic or anything. I just figured I had a lot of weird luck. But um, it, putting your foot down, it, honestly, that that worked for me. And why always a, a little girl ghost in these locations, right, George? It's like no. always a little girl ghost. And it's like what God would allow a child to roam the earth endlessly? I, I don't know of one. It, these things like to make themselves appear as that, but... Some psychics would tell me, yeah, that Heidi, that there are little girls. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I, I'll, I'll trust your instincts because I don't know. But um, I, I just feel that uh, um, it, sometimes I, it just doesn't, it rubs me the wrong way to think there's a child roaming like that. But shadow beings trap souls. They also attract them. So creating this portal uh, in your home, I'm, I'm not surprised that that's what might be going on right there. So it's just opening up the gates. Have you ever seen a shadow person or a hat person as a child, Heidi? Um, There's smaller ones, but uh, you'll often hear like, oh, I thought I heard a baby crying. Oh, a little girl appeared, and, and then it scratched me. The little girl scratched me. Like, that's not a little girl. You know, three scratches. Like, well, mocking the Trinity right there. So it's it's uh, these things like to portray innocence, to let your, so you let your guard down and and they come and get you. So I, I just, uh, I don't trust that um, going on. It's always the same scenario. What are you working on next? I am working on a new book on, uh, I, you know, I, I'd, I'd had the encounters with Jesus that I mentioned, and I've yeah. had others. So I'm, I'm writing up the follow-up to that. And, of course, uh, I have the paranormal comic strip, The Outlanders. Uh, it's based on some real stuff. And uh, I have a good time with it. So uh, outlanderscomics.com. Um, so if you want to check it out or on Instagram, um, I'm always having fun with that. And, uh, you know, always doing different TV shows here and there, uh, you know, as a guest. And uh, hopefully one day get my own. But we'll, we'll see because uh, I'm just hoping to get people more comfortable just to be who they are. You know, God is real. So are these evil things. So are aliens. Even those in our government can believe that this stuff is all encompassing so uh keep the faith and keep doing what you're doing and we'll talk to you friday in our news segment heidi hollis for dan galanti tom danheiser lisa lyon lex lone hood sean latasaur stephanie smith chris burroughs tim banal george knapp and richard serrett i'm george nori somewhere out there on coast to coast am we'll see you on your next edition until then be safe everyone